Hi, my name is Dan Elliott and welcome to this tutorial on Spline Components in Unreal Engine 4.3. Spline Components are a powerful new feature in 4.3 which allow you to use splines to create and mani manipulate content in your game. You can use splines to place objects such as actors and static meshes along predefined paths in your scene. And in a later video we'll see how we can use splines to deform geometry and also how to procedurally create repeating geometry in your games such as roads and buildings. So the first thing I'll do is open up the editor and I'm going to create a blank project. I'll just choose blank from the list of um, possible templates. I'm going to include the starter content because then I'll be able to use textures and meshes as examples later on. And I'll just call this spline component Spline component setup. You can call it what you want if you if you're doing this. So let's create a blueprint based off of an actor, and we'll give it a component. So I'll name this spline actor, and we'll enter the blueprint editor. So we've just created an actor-based blueprint which comes with a default scene component. If we uh, make this bigger and we look into the components tab, we can see it's got a default scene root. If you hover it over, it gives you this tooltip which says this is the default scene root component. It cannot be renamed or deleted. Adding a new scene component will automatically replace it as the new root. So the first thing I'll do is add a scene component which will replace the default scene component but this one will stay as the root component and we can name this root scene component and any other components we now create will become children of this the way we add a component to our custom actor is by going to the add components drop down like I did before and we can scroll down and we'll choose spline and now we've just created a spline component. If we rename this to be spline component example, we can see that this spline component is now a child of the scene component. So whenever we transform our actor around, the spline will come with it. We can see that our custom actor blueprint now has a spline component in the viewer. It comes by default with two points. And if we do a quick compile, we can actually see this in the viewport by dragging an instance of our actor into the scene. If you're familiar with blueprints, you'll know that you can drag as many of these into your scene as you want, and they'll all appear in the scene outliner. So now we can see by multiple selecting, we have three of these custom actor blueprints in our scene. I'm just going to delete these two because we only want to work with one right now. We can now edit these splines directly in the viewport. We can click on the individual points and move them independently from one another. We can see that as we're moving these points, we're not moving the blueprint directly. We can see that by looking in the details panel and noticing that the, the values of the location don't actually move. If we want to actually move the blueprint, we can deselect and reselect the blueprint. And now we have um, selection of the whole blueprint where we can move it around and we can see that the actual transform values are changing. A spline with two points isn't very useful, so to add points, we can select an existing point with the ALT key held down, and we can drag out to create new points. And we can do this as many times as we need to create the points we need for our spline. To delete points, we can simply click on a point, right click, and choose delete key. And again, we can do that as many times as we need to get rid of as many points as we want. One last thing I'll mention before ending this video and continuing the next one is that these splines have properties which 
while we can't see them in the viewport, will become very important later on. And these properties are the tangents. If I create multiple points here, we can see that as we drag these points around, the curvature of the spline automatically updates and continues to connect these points in a smooth way. The tangents of the spline points are what control how smoothly the spline transitions from one point to the next, and also the incoming and outgoing direction of the spline. If we select one of the points and enter the rotate tool, we can rotate the tangent to affect the incoming and outgoing direction. We can even scale the tangents. If we click on them into the scale tool, we can affect how far away this tangent affects the incoming and outgoing directions of the spline. The bigger the scale of the tangents, the bigger the effect of the tangent on the spline curve at further distances away from the point. Well, that's the basics of using spline components. In the next video, I'll show how we can use these in the editor to procedurally create content. Thanks for watching.